guys, we're back. The shift. We're today we're in a 2015 Porsche Macan S. Now the Macan is cool because it's Porsche's entry into the small SUV crossover segment with other cars such as the F-Pace, the Q3, the X, oh sorry, not Q3, X3, the GLC from Mercedes, the new ML, whatever nomenclature they're using nowadays. Thank you. As well as the Q5, which the Macan actually shares its platform with and I say share uh, quite loosely because the rumor in the mill is that the actual Macan has been so redone, so reworked apart from, you know, differentiating itself from the Q5 that, you know, basically they only share control arms. They changed everything, so it would have been even cheaper just to start from scratch. So the S features the 3 liter twin turbo V6, actually they all feature the 3 liter twin turbo V6 the, from the normal uh, Macan to the top of the line turbo model. The S uh, has 340 horsepower, 339 foot pounds of torque, does 0 to 60 in 5.2 seconds and it weighs just over 4,500 pounds. Again, these are facts that make little to no importance to be no deal just because the person who's gonna buy this although yes they did choose the Porsche they chose the badge the sportiest of the bunch they probably were not gonna care so much for those figures on the outside it's a very nice car to look at I was very excited when the Macan came out because it looks good in my opinion it's subjective um, they nailed it they nailed it Porsche did a great job uh, the Cayenne I was a very big fan of the first and second gen models Mark 1 or Mark 2, the Mark 3 is eh, but it's good, it's cool. The Macan, it's a nice car not only to drive but to be in. Coming into the interior, it's everything you would expect from a Porsche. Now, it has a 918 style steering wheel with the 10 and 2 position having this flat spot that's just perfect for your hands to be at all day to be right next to the paddles that are made out of metal instead of a plastic, which thumbs up Porsche. Uh, unlike a Lamborghini, let's say a Ventador, that isn't the paddle shifter, but it's the start button where you lift up the little toggle, the, the red little cover of it, and that, that piece is plastic. So good job Porsche for including some metal paddles on your $60,000 uh, SUV again moving on to the interior so the steering wheel is very nice the cluster is Porsche to the max definition of Porsche so you have the tack to the the tachometer in the middle sorry you have a little screen that shows you what gear you're in to the left you have your speedometer that's that's Porsche on the right you have a little LCD screen it's basically an MFD it shows you a lot of different menus you know so oil temperature boost pressure um, Torque split, you have TPMS, etc. etc. A bunch of different menus, uh, trip computer, which make it very handy. Other than that, you have your center console, you have your infotainment system. The infotainment system, this is a 2015 model, so it's not that new uh, LCD screen with the Apple CarPlay, etc. This is the Porsche infotainment system, that black and yellow color scheme one. That's that's awesome, I love it. Um, other than that, moving on, center console, it's, it's like your Panamera 911, same thing here. Differentiating itself from those though, this has an off-road mode, which sets up DSP to tr be transferring power, you know, adequately in situations of slip. Sport mode, um, opens up a valve and exhaust, it sharpens up the throttle, I think it stiffens up the dampers, I know in the air suspension ones it does, and it lowers it a little bit. But yeah, we're keeping it in sport mode because it also deactivates the auto stop start, which I'm not a big fan of. Coming back to the engine, it's a three liter twin turbo V6, 340 horsepower. It's mated to a seven speed PDK. Now, no other car in the segment um, has a double clutch. I don't think so, at least I, maybe the SQ5, which would be, I guess, a direct competitor to this, has the S-Tronic, which is, I guess, a DSG, PDK, whatever. Um, but yeah, this this for sure blows everything else out of the water. Uh, I'm sure the F-Pace and probably even the Mercedes have a ZF. Uh, don't quote me on it, but I want to say that they do. 
and this even though even still then the PDK is on a whole other level what is a car like to drive on a daily basis because again the car itself will be only driven and like you'll see the shots that we have in the video in those areas suburban suburbia you know a little more affluent neighborhood again because you're buying it's a sixty thousand dollars should be up to seventy thousand dollars who knows what the turbo is going to be who will what the turbo can come out to with all the options that you want to have it in but yeah man it's it's really nice it's a nice place to be in the steering oh the steering okay so in the previous reviews the mini and if the gti is out already the gti as well they both have electronically assisted power steering now this car features that as well but as i even said in the mini video i'm sure cars of a higher price bracket have a better system i'm sure they're more sorted and yeah you need sixty thousand dollars to get into that club because the macan steering you know it's as close to hydraulic as you can get the ratio is very nice the feels good the weighting is natural you know it's everything you would ask for from a steering system pdk is sick the downshifts are awesome the car handles great um the dampening is set to not too stiff, but you know it's not roly-poly on the corners. There are 295s all around, so you have plenty of grip. These are Pirelli Scorpion tires, so they're you know they don't scream that loud. They've been taking you know they, they they'll do the job. They'll do the job. Um, again, PDK shifts are really fast. You can drive this car in manual mode all day. When you come to a stop at a stop sign, there's also a hold feature where, similar to the M cars and their, with their DCTs, where if you're stopped, it won't move unless you put your foot on the gas. Here in this case, if you hold your foot on the brake long enough, it'll activate the hold function, which you, again, it'll hold the car until the moment where you put your foot on the, on the gas to move again. This car, you know, the Macan is at the top of the price range, the price bracket of its segment. And, you know, the Q5, the F-Pace, even the X3, you know, all the other cars are decent packages, you know, decent propositions for the money. But this is a Porsche, you know, like, the involvement for the driver, you know, the the cockpit, the cabin, like the sitting in here, it's just a nicer all around place to be than the rest of those, in my opinion, it's what I would say. Again, it is subjective. You know, you'd have to go and do the, you know, the test drives yourself to really choose to see if the money is worth it. Now, I can't even afford this car, but compared to its, you know, what it's up against, I'd say that I'd get a Macan over the rest. But yeah, all in all, the Macan, you know, it's great. It's such a nice place to be in. It's everything you would expect from a Porsche. Despite the fact that it is an SUV, you, won't, you wouldn't even think it is an SUV. You sit very low, um, you know, it handles very well. It's not floaty, it's not, you know, you go into a corner and it, you know, it just leans on the side. Awesome, it's awesome, it's a great place to be. The rear seats have ample space for the SUV that it is, the class that it's in. They're, they also fold down so you have even more space in the trunk. So yeah, man, it's just, it's a good buy, it's a good buy. If you're looking to get a Macan, you know, if even you're looking to get an X3 or a Q5 or an F-Pace, you know, if you could hold off a little longer to justify having one of these, even if it's the regular Macan, it doesn't have to be the S, do it. Why not? It's a great car. Go and test drive one. You'll see what I'm saying. You know, you'll see a lot of the same things, similarities. Hopefully, you share some of the same opinions that I do, that I have. If you want to rent this car, actually, this car is on Turo, a good friend of ours, Nico Vargas, even the Mini as well, and maybe some future cars that we're going to do. 
Um, we'll leave the link down below so you can see some of the cars. Anytime you're in Miami, you want to drive one of these, see for yourself if what I'm saying is true. It's, it's available, so let him know. Tell him we sent you, um, and he'll take care of you. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see any more, please subscribe. If you liked the video, drop us a like. If you want to leave any feedback, leave us a comment. Follow us on Instagram. We'll leave the links down below. Facebook as well. Um, and yeah, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Cheers.